I'm Larry Levin of the St. Louis Jewish Light. We're here today with a special Oscar preview at the beautiful Landmark Tivoli Theater in the University Loop, thanks to our friend uh, Laura Resnick here. We have three uh, exceptional film reviewers here. We have Harper Barnes, the film critic for the St. Louis Beacon. Welcome. Hi. We have our own editor, Ellen Futterman. And we have our editor-in-chief, Emeritus Bob Cohn. Welcome to all of you. to be here. Uh, Harper, let's start with you, and let's talk about 2010 in movies for a minute. Uh, compared to other years, was this a, a deep year, a shallow year, or somewhere in between? I, I think it was a pretty deep year. Uh, there were several movies that I just thought would just stand out uh, and, and would stand out in any year. Uh, let's start with some of our uh, picks for the year. Ellen, let's start with Best Supporting Actress. Best Supporting Actress. Well, I do think Melissa Leo in The Fire was uh, outstanding and probably is my odds-on favorite to win. That said, I thought Amy Adams was really great as well. And Bob, what about you? Yeah, supporting actors. Amy Adams would be my choice. Uh, the photograph of her in Entertainment Magazine is absolutely stunning. So is her portrayal. And she's she's showing her versatility. She had been in doubt in a very different kind of year, a different kind of role, and in Junebug. So she's really shown her range. So uh, although I would have no problem with Melissa Leo did ultimately get the award. They're just both two terrific guys. Yeah, but you got to pick one. Which one? Uh, Amy Adams. Okay. Harper? Well, I think Melissa Leo is probably going to win. And uh, I think it's a very tough category this year. Uh, my personal favorite is Haley Steinfeld uh, for True Grit because it's a movie that everyone remembers as a John Wayne movie. But she seized that the role of the young girl who's looking for revenge, looking for the man who killed her father. Uh, and made it really Maddie's movie instead of instead of Brewster Cogburn's movies. So. Let's go to Best Supporting Actress. Actor, huh? Okay. Um, well, uh, up until recently, I would have said Christian Bale, but I, I think that uh, I'm going to go with Jeffrey Rush to win this. He has won an Academy Award before, and so, the, again, the thinking is, if you've won once, will you win again? But um, he was so terrific in The King's speech, which is such a superior movie that um, I think he's going to walk away with it. Uh, Bob, what about you? I, I would also go with Chris, I would go with Christian Bale. It's very close with Jeffrey Rush because it was truly an outstanding part, and I don't know that uh, the, the movie would have worked as well with anyone else in that particular role. Uh, so uh, I do think Christian Bale is the older brother with the finery and so, many, so much baggage, mm -hmm. and yet he was still a big brother and still a mentor and worked through all that stuff, which many people the ring have had to do. So what about you, Harper? I, I agree. I think Christian Bale will win, and, and on balance, although I love Jeffrey Rush, I think he will win. Uh, I mean, I think he should win. Let's move on. Best actor, Bob. Colin Firth, I think, hands down is the best actor. Now, Jeffrey Rush could be nominated for the same category. I think he's up for best supporting actor. Uh -huh. But I think Colin Firth uh, really walks away with it. What about you, Al? I have to agree with Bob. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit before, and I, it's almost as if everything Colin Firth touches, he does such a nice job with. He was so remarkable in a single man last year and uh -huh. wound up losing to Jeff Bridges. I think it's kind of funny that they're up against each other again this year. Um, but I do think that this is his year to walk away with it, as well as should. And what about best actor for you, Harper? I, I think uh, uh, I think Colin Firth is, is going to win it, and I think he should. That That is a very difficult role. And mm -hmm. the pain on his face when he tries to speak and, and can't. Uh, I, I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he did a marvelous job. Yeah, and let's turn around with you and talk about best actress. Uh, <laughs> I have to check Sorry. my cheat sheet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What about best actress? Well, I, I, actually, uh, I actually felt that of the five, uh, that Natalie Portman was probably going to win for Black Swan. Uh, and she worked so darn hard. But my favorite was Jennifer Lawrence uh, in, in, in Winter's Bone, Searching the Hills of the, so of, of, of the Ozarks. So I'd say probably Natalie Portman's going to win. Uh -huh. But I like I liked Jennifer Lawrence a lot. We've talked about that. You yeah. thought highly of Jennifer. I did too. I, I, I'm sad in a way that the movie um, came out when it did, it, just because I think a lot of people have forgotten it, although it's on video now, so I think more people are running in, especially since it got the... Uh, best Picture, not. And Bob? You know, I, I would agree uh, with the character in Winter's Bone, uh, 
Jennifer Lawrence. I'm rooting for her. I thought her portrayal was extremely realistic as the young woman Re uh, over the over the years. And I worked with a group called Legal Advocates for Abused Women, and I've met people who are exactly her. Mm -hmm. So her portrayal was absolutely spot on perfect. Before we get to Best Director and Best Movie, um, uh, we're not going to cover a lot of the other categories, but there were some interesting things that I found, and I wonder if you guys had any comments you wanted to make. For instance, I thought it was pretty amazing that Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails, you know, comes out and wins the Golden Globe for, you know, for the best score, um, you know, against these very established uh, movie composers. Are there any other categories that, uh, that kind of wet your whistle in terms of things that were interesting? Well, I was glad to see that, that Roger Dawkins, the cinematographer for the Coen Brothers, was, was nominated. I don't think he's enough appreciated, and, and his, his cinematography in True Grit. At times, I thought I was watching a John Ford movie. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the only thing that I think is interesting is that Toy Story 3 is nominated for Best Picture. It's also nominated for Best Animated Film. It seems to me like it's a shoe-in for the animated film. Um, so I don't know if that's anything surprising, yeah. but it's just one of those things where you don't see that many animated pictures nominated. Yeah, although I didn't say I thought How to Train Your Dragon was almost as good as Toy Story 3. They were both excellent. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that's the only one of the nominated films, Toy Story 3, one of the major films that I didn't see, but the only one of the nominated best documentaries that I saw was something called Inside Job. Mm -hmm. And I was expecting a Michael Moore light approach, but it wasn't propagandistic, it wasn't manipulative, it was also extremely informative, mm -hmm. explaining the whole economic meltdown and who was responsible. Excellent. So I'm rooting for that. Excellent. Best director, Ellen. Well, you know, this is one of those categories that is, is hard for me, because to me it seems whatever the best movie is should be the best director, and that's not always the case. In fact, in some cases, one isn't always nominated with the other. Um, but because I, I guess, Flipping it around, I think that the King's Speech is going to win Best Picture. Mm. I would have to go with Tom uh, Cooper, Cooper being Best Director, because mm. I think it fits. I mean, I, I, the movie just, it's paced so well, and it's, um, it, it's such a wonderful story, and it's told so well, and acted so well, and everything just seems to work so well on it that mm -hmm. I, I really do think that um, both will win. Uh, I almost well. have to root for my near namesakes, Joel and Ethan Cullen. The fact that they took an already famous Western with John Wayne as Rooster Cogburn and turned it into this magnificent new work shows their versatility. And Very true to the book. Okay. Exactly, and the author of the book praised it, so did the uh, actress who portrayed the young girl in the first one. Mm -hmm. So I think it deserves strong consideration for best co-directors. And Harper? Um, I think uh, that, although I don't think that the social network is going to win best picture, and I understand what Ellen says, that the best picture and, the be and it should be the best director. But in this case, I think The Social Network was more of a director's movie. It was an ensemble piece. And I think David Fincher deserves uh, the Oscar for, for best director. And even though I don't get to vote, I would agree with you uh -huh. and with Aaron Sorkin. Because I think he was really yeah. trying to tell a story about computers, you know, and people looking at computers very hard. Well, let's get back to Social Network because it won, what, six or more of the of the other uh, award ceremonies. And, um, but King's Speech, of course, has won its share as well. So uh, I think those are the two clear favorites. Uh, mm -hmm. All three of you pick one of those two, or are you on board for another one, Bob? Well, King's Speech, I wouldn't rule out 127 hours, which also I think the director and the editing of that movie was magnificent since it focused primarily on the horrible dilemma faced by this one person. But So I would uh, add that to the list of things to consider. As between the King's Speech and the social network, I would go with the King's Speech because it blended real history and there wasn't as much fudging of facts as there was with the social network. And what about you, Harper? Um, I think the King's Speech is on a roll and, and will win. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing True Grit. I, I'd love to see the Coen Brothers win again. Uh, and I wouldn't mind seeing Winter's Bone win, too. Mm -hmm. And I, once again, Social Network was a fine movie. So. Any of those. Good year for it, was, it was a, a good darn year. good year. And in its own way, even though it's not, you know, it's not a, a winner, Inception was a unique kind of year yeah. as well. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think, you know, last year, I think the two front runners were The Hurt Locker and Avatar, mm -hmm. if I'm remembering correctly. And, uh, you know, The Hurt Locker was a much smaller movie. I don't think as many people saw it or mm -hmm. whatever. And Avatar, you know, was a very well, different kind of movie. But what I love so much about the movies that we're seeing, the, the stories are just so terrific uh -huh. in all of them, and um, uh, really compelling in a way. And uh, I think that that's, to me, that's 
what makes, you know, for great movies. It is, and your pick is? My pick is The King's Speech. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with Harper, it's on a roll. I also was my favorite of, um, with probably my second favorite being Winner's Bone. I just thought that that was, mm -hmm. you know, a terrific movie on so many levels. I just worry that anyone who sees it thinks that everyone in Missouri is the way the characters were. <laughs> 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 we were not. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us, and thanks to uh, Laura and the Tivoli, and thank you to Harper and to Ellen and to Bob uh, for this wonderful time uh, guessing about the Oscars. Thanks very much. Take care. Thanks. Take care.